Hello, we are here with the music team of St. Matthews to discuss our music program. We have James Garcia, his wife Tawny Garcia, and Saul Iriegas. Uh, Saul is our accompanist. James is the music leader, director, and we got a two for one kind of uh, with uh, Tawny who happens to be a good uh, soloist and also stand-in pianist. So welcome, and uh, why don't we start by telling us a bit about yourselves musically. We'll start with you, James. Um, well, I grew up listening to pop music on the radio, and then uh, my parents uh, encouraged that a few lessons. And so uh, they bought me my first instruments uh, out of a pawn shop, and I just kept on learning. And then when it came time to make a decision for um, my career, I decided to go to college. I attended San Antonio College for two years and then transferred to UTSA to major in um, music education and then changed my mind. I decided to go for music theory and composition. Um, so that was a change, but I ended up getting my degree. I also met Tawny at, uh, in music school in 1990. So that's basically it. I, I did return for some master's work, but I haven't completed that yet, but I had a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, Tawny, tell us a little bit about your musical background. Well, music has always been part of my life. Um, I started piano lessons when I was eight okay. and uh, was always in choir, did church choir at the church and sang in school choir, middle school, high school level. Uh, I started playing the piano at church when I was in eighth grade and have, um, seems like I've always played the piano and some at church on and off in different places. Um, for college, I got a Bachelor of Music Studies um, and certified to teach kinder through 12th grade in, uh, for choir. Um, but of course, piano's always been a passion, so I love to accompany for band, choir, and orchestra students for contests mm -hmm. and concerts when they have concerts. But it uh, seems like since James and I have been married, we've always had a church job and always been singing or playing. Um, and the great thing about being a musician is you've always got uh, versatility to, to do all kinds of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you all are a great match, musically at least. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> So, can you tell us something a little bit about your background, too? I'd love to. Um, I've always been an artsy kid growing up. Uh, loved to paint, did some dancing in elementary, uh, of course singing as well. Uh, my grandmother was able to afford my piano lessons growing up at age 10. Wow. And I've been playing since then. Uh, I've been a staff accompanist, uh, been a freelance accompanist for a long time, did some piano teaching. And like Tani, uh, uh, I'm also a state licensed uh, music teacher. And, um, and I'm here at St. Matthew's now, so. Oh, good. How better can it get? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I know there's a backstory here that you all have a history before you came to St. Matthew's. Would one of you like to volunteer to tell us about that a little bit? I'll try to James? do it in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> um, I started uh, UTSA in 1988. And then Tony came around in 1990 when she graduated, so she started in 1990, and we met in choir. And so um, several of our friends became couples, you know, just like us. Mm -hmm. And then around 1994, Saul came to UTSA, right when we were finishing up, and I got to meet him, and he was also in choir. So um, very often, we would carpool, and because he and I lived on the same side of town, we got to know each other, so I would go pick him up, and uh, we'd go to choir concerts and, mm -hmm. and, and go to tour as well. So um, that's how we knew each other um, from that point. Now then, once we graduated, um, I've always had church jobs, I think since about 1988 as well. Um, I got my first church job as when I saw an advertisement um, that a church was looking for a paid singer. So I started in 1988, and then um, we graduated and started uh, working at other churches. And at one point, we needed to have an extra person come on board as a pianist, so we thought of Saul. And so I think we've, this is the third church that we worked at together. Wow. But this time, he was actually at the church before we were. And so when he found out that we were looking, he brought us to Pastor Dave's attention. And that's how we came to be here. Okay. Right. Thank you for that, So You're welcome. <laughs> I knew they'd be uh, the perfect uh, match of what this church needed. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think we can see that. Okay. And I think the background that y'all have shows in the music and how quickly... There was not much getting to know each other or mm -hmm. breaking each other in. Right. <laughs> right. And that kind of thing that happens right. with music, yeah. I know that. Well, with Saul and, Saul and I, both being accompanists, 
um, you always have your go-to list as mm -hmm. an accompanist. So if you need to recommend somebody, so like Soul's always been on my list. Mm -hmm. So if people call and I couldn't do it, he was one of the people I would recommend. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. you know, and then when I was teaching, Soul accompanied my choir for a concert or two. Okay. You know, and so it's kind of like we've just always been in each other's lives. You know, mm. somehow, some way. That's um, interesting. Just yeah. a phone call away. <laughs> now, along with that too, we've noticed that sometimes Saul is singing with the band and James is actually playing the piano. And can you tell us how that comes about? I know your musical styles are somewhat different and I assume that has something to do with it. Right. Being a person that grew up with a, a lot of rock music and pop music, um, I naturally um, fell into playing in, in contemporary bands. So if I was a paid tenor somewhere and the, the music, the worship leader said, we're going to start a contemporary service, and I know that you play bass guitar, would you like to do that? Of course, I, I jumped at the chance. So um, I started training in contemporary music about two decades ago under uh, a, another diverse musician. Mm -hmm. um, so that helped with that. It always helps for us to think about our primary roles. I'm the music uh, director and I choose most of the music. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm usually one of the lead vocalists and I direct a choir. Tawny's role is usually that of um, our soloist and our harmony singer. And then Saul is usually the accompanist. But being that we're so diverse and their training is more formal classical and my training on piano is more in the pop realm, the, you know, the co contemporary Christian realm, we switch back and forth. And so we become utility players in that sense where we just fill whatever need is for that particular piece. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's always exciting to do that. Yeah. And while we were in the concert choir at UTSA, uh, James, and I, James and I sang tenor when we were in the choir yes. at UTSA. And uh, I've always had a love for singing, so uh, when I had the chance to do it more often here, I jumped at it. So there are no quarrels. James can play whatever he wants to. <laughs> uh, but I love being up there singing. Yeah. Singing uh, is usually uh, a child's first instrument. And uh, thank God for that. All right. Um, along with that, with the different styles, how do you decide, James, uh, on your music, uh, what you would call maybe a classical piece or a contemporary piece or something like that, as right. in quotes? <laughs> right, exactly, because it, it, how do you define such, right? Um, usually I start with whatever passages Pastor Dave uh, sends to me and whatever vision he has for the message that's going to be for that day. Mm -hmm. And then not only for the day, but there's also like the long arching, what's going to be the overall message for the season. So I try to work, sometimes I work backwards from, you know, Easter Sunday back to the beginning of Lent or something like that, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve to the beginning of Advent. So I try to have a, an overall view of how we're going to progress through the season. And whatever the message for the day is, um, what we've collected over the years is a bunch of resources. Some of them are online resources for contemporary pieces. Some are online for classical pieces, choral or piano. And uh, so we'll have those, and then we'll have books that we've collected over the years, all sorts of different texts that tell you how to put together um, mm -hmm. worship services. Oh, okay. And I think most people work with two or three really favorited um, online sites or books that they love. I think we've collected about 15 where we go back and look at stuff. Mm -hmm. And now most hymnals from different faiths are starting to become more... Um, I guess homogenized, where there's a lot more sharing between faiths, and mm. so we'll think of a, of a hymn that's from the Presbyterian tradition or the Catholic tradition mm -hmm. that has now been included with the, the Methodist uh, hymnals that are coming out, and so um, we have much more choice when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So whatever is going to fit best for the day, and is also going to, shall we say, check off the most boxes, you know, one that's contemporary, one that's a very old traditional hymn, and one that's more of a contemporaneous hymn in between, like the late 1800s, um, early 20th century, that's a little bit more modern than the very, very traditional hymns. So we just try to hit as many flavors as we can, so to speak. Okay. Your point, too, about uh, looking at the seasons, and that works in well because Pastor Dave tends to have sermon series. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. so there's one theme over several weeks. I, do you try to work in that, too? Yes, sometimes we'll have, um, whenever you have several scripture passages, you'll notice that there are five or six hymns that go really well together. And so you'll, you'll have this nice pattern of hymns through several services that have a cohesiveness to them. Mm -hmm. Same thing with contemporary songs. And often I'll ask other pastors and other music ministers, music worship ministers, 
I know this hymn says this particular thing really well. Do you know of a contemporary song that says that same thing? Yeah. Because some people, they're very um, attuned to one sort of music and they'll receive the message best that way. Mm -hmm. So if I can get another song in a different style that will speak to another segment of the population, mm -hmm. that, that's one of my overarching goals is how do we serve as many people as possible. Thank you, I've noticed that too, you know, being somewhat of a musician myself, that the range of capabilities and styles that y'all can do is uh, really nice to have in our worship services. I really personally appreciate that. Thank you. Do you have any goals for the music program here or with the choir or just the band or anything like that? Have you, anything you, that you can share? Well, I think one goal that will make Pastor Dave happy is more guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but in addition to that, I, I just want to see if we can re-engage because if we're coming out of the pandemic and so we're starting to um, attend more, uh, more people are starting to attend services. So I just want people to feel comfortable to join any of the groups. Mm -hmm. And at some point we may need to create uh, another group um, for another purpose that people might just want to mm -hmm. do something new. Um, in other churches, you know, most churches have an adult choir and they have a praise band. And sometimes you have people that may want to do something a little different. And so you just create that on the fly you know, just because uh, of the need. An example would be if you have four men that are willing and they want to get together, a men's quartet would be fantastic. Mm. We've often had um, ladies that had a great music education background when they were younger and they became moms and wives and kind of put it aside for a moment and then they wanted to come back to it and do something again. So we've had fantastic women's ensembles. You, you never mm. know what's going to evolve mm -hmm. based on the need and based on the, the, the current population of a church. Yeah. So my goal is to try to create opportunities for people either as soloists or in a group setting that they might want to come back or possibly join for the first mm -hmm. time. So retention and also recruiting of new people would be great. I mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned about um, COVID and the hiatus we had because of that because you were hired in the middle of that and how yes. that would affect your perception and and what you would see as planning so that I think you just answered it very well yes um, one last question um, being here at st. Matthews how's that affected you or uh, what has being involved with our music pro program has has had an effect on you or or you have been impressed with or things like that uh, well one thing I think about is that um, you always want a church family and we, we've kind of bounced from church to church to church for a while and there was what there was one point in time where we had what felt like our tribe um, and you had those people that would give you advice parenting advice marital mm -hmm. advice people mm -hmm. that you trusted you know and then the the kids you could call on to come and babysit your kids the teenagers you know and so we we've kind of lost we lost that for a while and especially with covid we lost everything all that connection mm -hmm. so in coming here it's kind of like we have refound that family tribe um and those people and those extra grandmas and, mm -hmm. and aunts that that uh, are yeah. there for our children and and again they're for us mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the things that i'm i'm loving is, is okay. that connection yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to add that this is the first time uh, really in, uh, in, in, in my lifetime, uh, having played since I was 18 years old, that um, uh, for a church that is, where I feel fully comfortable. I have mm -hmm. never been in a church where I, I see the love of Christ mm -hmm. uh, in motion, in action, and I've never been able to play uh, with such ease and comfort like I do here. And it's because everyone around me has been very accepting of, of who I am and, and, and what I want to do. Uh, but yes, that, that's one thing that's changed for me is um, my music seems to just flow now from, mm -hmm. from my heart. And um, it's because of the people here. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you. Thank you. I think that sounds like a great place to uh, stop the interview here. Thank you for giving us some input into the music program and your feelings and, and particularly how you feel about us. That's, I hope we can keep that up. Yes. So until next time, we'll see you then.